Good afternoon and welcome to Greenfield Solicitors YouTube channel with myself, Rahila Hussain, the Principal Solicitor of Greenfield Solicitors. Today's video will be on the subject of case scenarios. Case scenarios based on clients and cases that we have dealt with uh, at Greenfield Solicitors, uh, which we deal with on a routine basis, day in and day out. We hope the following video will be informative and helpful and hope you enjoy it. Now, I'd like to also confirm that the information that I provide today is just that. It's general information. Uh, it should not be considered as legal advice. If you require legal advice on your immigration matter, then please do contact Greenfield Solicitors in order to book an appointment for a consultation with either myself or one of the solicitors or team members at Greenfield Solicitors. And we will be happy to assist you and provide you with legal advice during a consultation. Our contact details are shown, so you can contact us by telephone or by email and whichever method you prefer. And we do try and aim to reply back within one working day in order to book an appointment. Please do bear with us as we are specialists in UK immigration and human rights law. We are a busy firm, but please be assured that we will contact you as soon as we can to book an appointment for you if you request this. Now, there are lots of cases that I could go through with our viewers today, but I'm going to, again, concentrate on a very popular and hot topic at Greenfield Solicitors, which is the subject of overstayers and their case scenarios. Now, bearing in mind confidentiality is at the forefront, uh, we will not be discussing or providing any particular or in-depth in details on our clients or their case scenarios. I'll just see, seek to give you an overview of the kind of cases that we have successfully dealt with at Greenfield Solicitors, so you have an idea of whether or not you have a case that you would like to be considered by us. So, uh, what I'll touch upon first is uh, single people. When single people attend Greenfield Solicitors and they say, I entered the UK either illegally, so without a visa, or I entered the UK on a visa, so let's just say, for example, they entered on a tier four student visa, and that visa expired and they did not renew or seek to get any other type of visa to remain in the UK. Thereafter, they may have remained in the UK for several years thereafter and, and you know, they may be here sometime after and they've booked an appointment to see one of our team members here at Greenfield Solicitors and they've asked for whether there are any legal options for them to try and remain in the UK lawfully as they do not intend for whatever reason they may have, which they would explain to us during the consultation, to return back to their native country. Now, Greenfield Solicitors, we deal with people from all over the world. So we have clients ranging from Azerbaijan, um, all the way to Mexico, uh, all the way to even Fiji. We deal with uh, many people from the African countries. So a large client base of ours includes Ghanaian clients, Nigerian clients, Ugandans, Kenyans, uh, Moroccans, and of course, people from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, countries all over the world. So we have seen scenarios and circumstances of people all over the world. So there's not very much that shocks us or not very much that we're not experienced in. So therefore, we have a multitude and years of experience to provide to our clients when they come to us for advice. So let's just assume that single person comes and, and they say, you know, I want to stay here. What are my options? Now, what we will firstly try and ascertain is, well, what are they doing here? What are their ties here in the UK? What are their ties back home? What's the reason they don't want to return to their native country of origin? What have they established in the UK? Can they prove uh, their strength of ties in the UK and their lack of ties potentially in their home country or any difficulties that they would have restarting their life? Because uh, one of the laws under paragraph 276 ADE of the immigration rules looks at whether the person has very significant obstacles so if there are very significant obstacles that we can successfully argue to the Home Office as to why they cannot return to their native country of origin, we will also seek to argue that, back out with documentary evidence, provide as much detail and information to the Home Office when submitting a client's case in the hope that they obviously will have a very good chance of obtaining legal status. Uh, when we submit a case, we will also argue the relevant laws, which I will touch upon as this video progresses. So if a person has a strong case where they can show exceptional, compelling and compassionate circumstances, I'll reiterate that sentence because it is very important, compelling, exceptional and compassionate circumstances, and we can show that to the Home Office that there are these 
exceptional compassion and compelling circumstances as to why a person should be granted leave to remain in the UK under the relevant UK immigration and human rights laws, then there is a better chance of success in a client's case. So, for example, we've dealt with single people from uh, single females and single males who cannot go back to their home country. They may have a particular skill set that is required in the UK and the UK is uh, happy to have a, a migrant with that level of skill set in the UK so they can grant leave to remain outside of the immigration rules on a discretionary leave to remain basis or perhaps where they really do believe that the migrant has absolutely nothing to return to back in their native country of origin and that there's genuinely very significant obstacles as to their integration and that it would be a breach of the, of the laws not to grant them legal status. We've seen our clients successfully obtain leave to remain in the UK for a two and a half year period on the 10 year route to settlement. Now, other cases that we have at Greenfield Solicitors is when people come to us as couples with or without children, begin without children case scenarios. Those are partners who've cohabited usually in excess of two years when the law provides that where you can show cohabitation more than two years with obviously other criteria that needs to be satisfied, then it would be possible to submit an application to the Home Office for the person who's overstayed to obtain legal status to remain um, in the UK on the basis of that relationship. So again, documentary evidence is very important. We would also need to argue why the British or settled spouse in the UK or partner in the UK cannot relocate to uh, the client's home country. So uh, for example, we had a case where the person was from China and the lady had overstayed in the UK for many, many years and she had formed a very firm and committed relationship with a British gentleman here and they were able to show their cohabitation which was many many years of cohabitation as they had a serious relationship. They did not share children but we were able to successfully obtain leave to remain for the Chinese lady to remain in the UK lawfully on the basis of her established relationship with a, a British national because we were able to argue to, that the British national gentleman could not relocate to China to live with this lady because Firstly, he'd never even visited China. He wouldn't be able to live there, integrate, speak the language, know the culture. All his ties were in the UK. Um, and on the basis of the relevant laws that we argued, the Home Office did grant our client, the Chinese lady, the two and a half years leave to remain in the first instance on the 10 year route settlement. So that was a good outcome for them. In addition, we have cases where there are children involved. So for example, um, we have a gentleman, he was from uh, an African country, Zimbabwe, and he actually had a child with a lady in the UK. Now, the lady was a British national and therefore their child automatically obtained British nationality. However, the parties, our client and the lady, separated. So he was no longer living with that lady, but he was very much involved in their child's life and he wanted to continue his role as a father in their child's life. So we submitted a case under the relevant laws uh, to the Home Office and we argued that despite the client being an overstayer, he was very much involved. He had a parental responsibility and parental rights to continue to be involved with his British citizen child, even though he was not living with the child or the mother, but he often visited the child and was involved as a father would be otherwise in those circumstances. And uh, putting in the relevant documentation, which was significant, we were successfully able to get the, that particular client again, leave to remain for two and a half years under the 10 year route to settlement. And he too was regularized, which was a huge relief to him because he was in the UK unlawfully for many, many, many years. And therefore his life within a matter of months, once we had submitted the application to the Home Office, turned around for the better, thankfully, in that he was granted lawful status to remain in the UK on the basis of him being the father of a British citizen child. No. So on another case scenario, including children, we had a family who came in from India and they, the gentleman had come in on a tier points based system visa with his dependent wife also from India. And he also brought along two of his children from India. Now, during their time in the UK, they had another child here in the UK and things went wrong on the tier points based system visa. At that time, the company he was working for, uh, the tier two visa that he actually had, the company closed down and uh, therefore he had no right to remain in the UK with his family members. However, for his own personal circumstances, he did not return to India and they remained here. By the time that the UK born child was seven, he submitted an application just after the case the child turned seven 
uh, under what we call the seven-year rule. It's an abbreviation. And we successfully argued not only for the child, but for the two siblings and the two parents that they should be granted leave to remain in the UK because it would not be reasonable to expect the seven-year-old child to be expected to leave the UK, the only country that child has known, to go back to their the parents' country of origin. So there are laws that, with children in particular, the, the UK immigration take into consideration, um, with particular reference to the Section 55 of the Border Citizenship Immigration and Asylum Act 2009, which really does focus on the best interest and the primary consideration being children when assessing immigration cases. So the Home Office is very careful when assessing ch cases with children because they really do have to look at the best interests of the children, not penalise, not to penalise children for perhaps their parents' mistakes when they have overstayed. So there's a lots of case laws that we can um, rely, rely, rely on when we submit a client's case to the Home Office, arguing that they and their children can be granted. In this case, the family, again, were granted uh, leave to remain outside of the immigration rules, and all of them and then they were on the 10-year route to settlement. I would just like to let you know of the current immigration rules uh, when there are children involved. One of the laws, not, not obviously all of them, I can't go through all of them on this video, but one of them is regards to the exception criteria of the immigration rules, which provides that where an applicant has a genuine and subsisting parental relationship with a child who is under the age of 18 years, is in the UK, and either, is either a British citizen or who has lived in the UK continuously for at least seven years preceding the date of application and taking into consideration and into account the best interests as uh, a primary concern whether and assessing whether it would be reasonable to expect the child to leave the UK. Those are the kind of criteria and rules that the Home Office look at and what lawyers such as myself will need to successfully show and argue in order to satisfy the criteria so they, uh, so whether or not a client is granted leave to remain in the UK. Now, we've also got cases where there's couples and they have a child. So, for example, uh, a Canadian lady, she entered the UK on a visit visa. Things went a bit wrong for her. Um, she had a partner here in the UK, she fell pregnant with the child um, and the partner and her decided they wanted to keep the child and remain together as partners in the UK. Now because she was heavily pregnant during this time she couldn't take a flight back to her home country of Canada and she wanted to remain here in the UK on the basis that she had a British citizen partner and an impending British citizen child because when she approached the firm she had not yet given birth though she was pregnant. So we submitted an application whilst she was uh, pregnant, notifying the Home Office of her circumstances and letting them also know that she was due to give birth and documentary evidence, prove the relationship, prove the pregnancy and so on. And we explained uh, why we would ask that ex compassion be shown in the exceptional and compelling circumstances of our client's case and that she'd be granted leave to remain outside of the immigration rules. And the case was well argued because she did have a good uh, case with regards to having a British partner and British child, which are two quite strong points when you make an application as an overstayer to the Home Office. Again, she was granted within a sheer matter of months, I think something like six to seven months, she was granted leave to remain as well for two and a half years on the 10 year route to settlement. Um, and it, it was a case where the Home Office made further inquiries, so they will often write to us in a client's case once we submit an application to request further information or request documentation, which we always let our clients know about. And then they provide that to us, we provide it to the Home Office, and we usually find that a decision is forthcoming. Um, we do like to comply with requests from the Home Office when they request further documentation information because obviously our role is to provide them with as much information as possible to help them assess our client's case. I would like to say that a lot of these cases that I've mentioned, there's a very, very small fraction of case scenarios that we dealt with at Greenfield Solicitors. We, we have people with uh, so many different sort of scenarios, it would be difficult for me to do a video of less than perhaps 20 hours um, because we've seen so many cases. Uh, we have people with medical problems, health problems, 
dire reasons why they cannot return to their home country, um, violence issues as to why they cannot return to their home country or cultural problems that they would face there. Uh, there's, a, there's a huge spectrum. So if you have a case or if you know somebody who would be interested to find out their options with regards to applying for legal status to remain in the UK if they are overstayers and require regularisation of legal status, please do contact us, Greenfields solicitors.com our website there is www.greenfieldsolicitors.com where you can learn more about the professional services that we provide for our clients in the UK and where you can read testimonials from our clients um, because we have provided legal services for over a decade to our clients and there are many many happy clients that we have helped over the years obtain legal status given them almost a new lease of life from previously being overstayer or legal and then suddenly being lawful and, and happy and free. So if you do need uh, advice, please contact us to arrange an appointment. Our contact details are shown. We do aim to reply within one working day. You can always email us at info at greenfieldslisters.com, providing us with a very brief description of the immigration problem. And if we can assist you, then we will offer you an appointment. Please note that we are a very busy firm, high demand for our professional services. So we do prefer that um, once you've actually sent us an email and inquiry, then we will get back to you. Please be assured that if we can help you, we will get back to you and schedule you an appointment. I hope this video has been helpful and of good viewing to you. And I thank you for watching this video. Again, my name is Rahila Hussain of Greenfield Solicitors. Thank you and take care.